Let's start with the first example. We have three times the square root of y minus 18 is equal to negative three. The goal here is to solve for y. So why don't we add 18 to both sides? So we have three squared y is equal to 15. Now we're gonna divide both sides by three. We have square root of y is equal to five. Last step, we wanna get rid of the square root. So the way you get rid of the square root is by squaring both sides. We have y is equal to 25, and that is our answer. Next example, we have two times the square root of q plus five is equal to 11. Our goal is to solve for q, so why don't we subtract both sides by five to get two square root of q is equal to six. We still have a two here, so let's divide both sides by two. And we have square root of q is equal to three. Square both sides to get rid of the square root, and we get q is nine. Next one, square root of a minus three plus five is equal to nine. We wanna get a by itself, so first we have to subtract by five. We have square root of a minus three is equal to four. Next step is to get rid of the square root. So we'll square both sides. We have a minus three is equal to 16. Adding three to both sides, we have a is equal to 19. Moving on, we have the square root of b plus seven minus five is equal to negative two. We'll add five to both sides. And so we have the square root of b plus seven is equal to three. Let's square both sides. The square is gonna cancel, we have b plus seven is nine. And if we subtract seven to both sides, we end up with b is two. Next one, we have the two times the square root of x plus four is equal to 16. Now we're not adding or subtracting by anything, so why don't we divide both sides by two get square root of x plus four is eight. And now we're gonna square both sides. We get x plus four is equal to 64, and so x is equal to 60. Similarly, we have five times the square root of y minus two is equal to 10. Let's divide both sides by five, and then square both sides, get rid of the square root. And so adding two to both sides, we end up with y is equal to six. All right, the next one is written a little differently. We have negative one is equal to the square root of five r plus one minus seven. Adding seven to both sides, we have six is equal to the square root of five r plus one. Now we wanna get rid of the square root. So we're gonna square both sides. We have 36 is equal to 5r plus 1. Subtract 1 to both sides and divide by 5 to get r is equal to 7. Next one is 2 is equal to the square root of 4s minus 4 and then minus 4. So we'll add this 4 to both sides. To get 6 is equal to the square root of 4s minus 4. Square both sides to get rid of the square root. 36 is equal to 4s minus 4. Here, I'm gonna do a nice little trick by dividing both sides by four. We have nine is equal to s minus one. And so adding one to both sides, we get s is equal to 10. Okay, next one is two is equal to, sorry. Next one is seven plus three times Square root three P minus nine is equal to 25. We'll subtract seven on both sides. We have three times the square root of three P minus nine is equal to 18. Dividing by three, we have the square root of three P minus nine is equal to six. Now we'll square both sides to get rid of the square root. We have three P minus nine is equal to 36. Adding nine to both sides, we have three P is equal to 45 and then we'll divide both sides by three to get p is equal to 15.
finally, we have 19 minus 4 times the square root of 3c minus 11 equals 11. So here, let's do a nice little trick. We'll subtract the 11 on this side and then add the 4 root of 3c minus 11 on the other side. So we'll have 19 minus 11, that's going to give us 8. And then we're going to add the 4 root 3c minus 11. We'll divide by 4. And then we're going to square both sides. So the square root goes away. And we have 4 is equal to 3c minus 11. Adding 11 on both sides, we have 15 is equal to 3c. And that means c is equal to 5. And that is our answer.